<laughs> we were roommates in Bases Band. You remember the time we were in Paris? And uh, most of the times, Basie Band would stay. When we first started going to Europe, we stayed in the pretty fancy hotels and stuff and uh, where you couldn't have a guest, you couldn't do anything. So finally, we kind of broke away from that and we started finding our own hotels. So this one particular time, we went way across town to this hotel. And uh, yeah, we're back there Leon. And we were trying to get back to the theater. I think Olympia Theater. Yeah, we had to play with a uh, uh, play, yeah. And we were late getting to, you know, getting to our gig. And we came out of the hotel across the street. And there was a, you know, taxi stand and a long queue. And, and you know, and it's impossible for us to get a cab, so I went up to the front of the line and I was asking people, you know, tell them I was, we were very pressed and we were in a hurry trying to get to work. And would we, we please let us have the cab, you know, and everybody, get away, get away, you know, so. So, <clears throat> finally, in the cab, in the line, in the queue was an Arab cat. And he uh, he came up and I touched him on the shoulder and I told him that we were very pressed and we were musicians trying to get to work and we played with Count Bates' band and all so and so and so and so. And he, you know, he, he, he kind of turned me away too. He wouldn't tell the cab driver where he wanted to go. And I touched him again on his shoulder and he turned around and looked at me and I said, Mon frère, that means my brother. Mon frère, and he stepped back and gave us the cab. And then Benny and Bill Graham, he said, what did you tell him? What you tell him? I thought it was like magic because... He didn't know where the this was. was. See, what? I know I lived around those people a long time. I lived in North Africa for a year and a half or so. And so I was with the Arabs all the time. So I know where they are, you know. Mm -hmm. So when I told him I was in trouble and my brother, he stepped back. That's what happened. Yeah. Somehow I remember this guy having on uh, dark glasses and the lens looked like Coca-Cola bottle. You know, the glasses you can't see nobody's eyes through. You know. <laughs> and I remember he was kind of a, uh, uh, not a frightening cat, but a straight up. I didn't think he would, uh, that's why we were so startled to ask him, uh, what did he say? Because I thought this was an unrelented guy. As soon as he said, my friend, whole scene changed. Yes. And I always thought, damn, I said, damn, that's my roommate. <laughs> that's the guy <laughs> I want to roll with. For me, don't. some of the happiest times were the tours with Billy Eckstein. In fact, uh, Frank, and Frank has a history with Billy Eckstein before uh, that. Because I think, did you play with this band? Yeah, but I knew him even before I knew him when he was uh, with Earl Hines. You know, we, he and Bud Johnson and I, they were much older than me, but we were all drinking buddies, you know. So we used to drink together, you know. So that's a hell of a trip. That's how I got in his band, you know. I, you know, he knew me. So <clears throat> after the war, I came went by the Howard Theater to see him, see his band. He said, look, I need a tenor player. My tenor player's going in the army. Come over. I said, okay. So I quit my job, and they wouldn't even pay me because they didn't want me to quit. But I quit the job anyway. I don't want the band. That was the first bebop band. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, with Art Blake and Sass Navarre and Gene Hammers and yeah. all those people. Hank Jones was in the band when we played here in New York at the Sudan, too. When we used to do those Birdland tours, uh, Billy Eckstein was very instrumental in getting Basie started again after he had Basie had broken his band, big band down to a smaller group. And I think when uh, Basie decided he was going to start up again, I think Billy Eckstein gave him stands and a bunch of other stuff. And he recommended me to Basie. He's the one who recommended me to Basie. Billy Eckstein did? Yeah. yeah. Well, see, people don't want to give Billy Eckstein credit because he never was Uncle Tom and none of that. And he didn't take no bullshit. But actually, <coughs> he's done for more for the music than a whole lot of people, because if you stop to think of it, everybody that we revere in, 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 in the, the bebop thing, everybody was in his band, everybody. 
Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker, the Mad Lad, uh, <coughs> Tommy Potter, Tag Jones, uh, uh, Gail Brockman, Hyde McGee, Odd Blakey, Odd yeah, uh, Blakey, uh, uh, Lucky Thompson, everybody, everybody, uh, uh, Booney, Fats Navarro, Miles Davis, everybody that you, you people we revere came right out of Bill Eckstein's band. And Billy was responsible for all of that. Wow. He was the one, but nobody wants to give him credit. I never do that. That's why I know, because people don't want to know it. <clears throat> because they blackballed him. They blackballed him. He, he, he broke all the records at the Paramount Theater. They got, they got TV shows of this. He broke all the records at the Paramount Theater. When he played the Paramount Theater, you couldn't even walk in the street. You couldn't, the truck, cars couldn't get out on Broadway with so many people, women out there. And one little girl came up and threw her head on his shoulder. He don't know, he just come out on after the show. She put his head, her head on his shoulder like that and he probably put on the cover of Life magazine. After that, he couldn't work in this country. Say, so where's Ben X at? Oh, he's in Australia. Where's it be? Oh, he's in Europe. He couldn't get a job here. She had Frank Sinatra was going to the gym then. Frank Sinatra wasn't doing nothing. Bill Eckstein was the Madden Idol, you know? So that's, that's how Frank Sinatra got in. You don't know who that girl was, just a teenager come up, you know? You know? He was a Madden Idol. But that's uh, the kind of thing that they used to bust anybody who was getting yeah. too big. Anyway, uh, after a while, Bass's band got started. Then we started doing tours, the Birdland tours. 